Dr. Francois Booker Drew, and I am the host of the podcast, The Tapestry. This podcast is really designed for me to bring on different wonderful individuals, women particularly, so that you could hear their narratives and learn lessons from their journey that can help you in reaching your purpose and your possibility. And so today I am going to do something very different. After 20 plus episodes, I've decided that you all need to hear from me and that this would be a great way as we move into 2021, um, a great way to kind of talk about some things that are important to me and also for you to learn a little bit about why I'm doing this and why this is so important. And so, you know, this year has been such a difficult year. I think we have gone through so many um, trials and tribulations. And I remember once we walked into 2020 thinking, wow, this is a new year. 2020, you know, when you go to an eye doctor really is about vision and getting clarity And I think that that's what we got this year. Um, Who would have known that in January of 2020, we would have been spending nine months of our lives quarantined and, and confined to our homes and having limited ability to get out? Or who would have known that we would be on Zoom calls and Microsoft Teams and Skype and all of these other Um, video platforms to be able to connect? Who would have ever thought that we would not be able to go to restaurants and to be able to spend time with family members during the holidays? None of us saw that in January, and yet our lives completely changed when we walked into March. And I don't think that we were even aware. I know I wasn't aware of what we were going to experience, but all of this has created an opportunity for clarity and for us to really have the vision that we needed moving forward for 2021. And so for me, it's been a year of not only thinking about loss, you know, the loss of our routines or the loss of the ability to be as active. I think it's also been a year for many of us in the loss of jobs and in the loss of even loved ones. You know, recently a dear friend of mine who was on the show Um, In much earlier episodes, her son just passed away from COVID complications. He was 21. And I would have never thought that this vibrant young man would have succumbed to this illness and that it would have resulted in the loss of just a wonderful, generous young man. And even in experiencing this loss, I think it has opened up our eyes to how valuable family is and that none of us know the time or, you know, when we're going to be in that position where we're going to leave this earth. And so how do we make sure that we are building a legacy that we can be proud of? And even though Chris was 21, what that young man had been able to accomplish in 21 years has been a life filled with um, generosity and kindness. He was so polite. He was such a thinker. He was so driven. And looking at what he was able to accomplish in 21 years makes me think about what does legacy look like. And so I'm hoping that as you all think about 2021, that you become very intentional about the legacy that you want to create for your life. What will people say about you when you are no longer on the planet. You know, I've never been to a funeral where people talked about the jobs that someone has had or talked about, you know, how clean their house may have been or, you know, how much money they made. People talk about how a person made them feel and they talk about relationships. And so as you are moving forward and thinking about your legacy going forward, How do you make people feel? What are the relationships that you are investing in? Are there opportunities for you to really begin to leverage your existing relationships in a different way? And, you know, who are your three? You know, when I always think biblically about Jesus, Jesus had the three that he was very close and intentional with, but then he also had the 12. Who are the 12, your personal board of directors? And then he had the masses of people that he touched. I think all of us can see that or use that rather as a model for our lives. Who are the three people that are very close to you that hold you accountable? 
you know, that you can have these very deep, authentic conversations where you can be the totality of who you are. But who are the 12? And those people that are, you know, helping you think about the, the ministry or the path of your life. Because I think we tend to focus so much on the masses that we aren't necessarily paying attention to the ones who are close to us. And how do we build those relationships and leverage those relationships? That's important for us to do as we move forward. But the other thing I would want to challenge you to think about as you move into this upcoming year is to think about remembering and reflecting because I think we spend so much time in doing that we really don't spend enough time in being. I'll never forget, I was with a physical therapist and he had told me that, you know, we're human beings, not human doings. And we do so much and we have these list of goals that we don't really take the time to sit and reflect and remember and think about where God has brought us from but where we are going. And you can get so busy looking in the rear view mirror that you miss um, what's ahead of you, but you can also be so busy looking in front of you that you don't realize that you're going to get hit from behind. And so it's about the balance and both of those that we have to have in order to be successful. And so what I would push you to do as you think about legacy in this upcoming year, and you think about what are you building as you think about the relationships that you need to leverage or pour into, I want you to also think about in this upcoming year, the power of reflection and looking at your past experiences. So often as we move into a new year, we think about setting goals and we come up with all these goals every year. It's lose weight and to do all these different things. And I just made a decision a couple of years ago that I was not setting all these goals. If they weren't a part of the, the life goals that I, I have, you know, and have created for years, then I'm not going to just start new ones every year. It has to be a part of what I'm already doing. But what I did change was I started setting intentions and I started creating a word of the year. And last year, my word was uh, movement. Um, I wanted to see the movement of God. And boy, did I see that this year. But the year before it was power. I wanted to be able to see my own power and see God's power in me and in others. And so I haven't said it for this upcoming year because it's something I need to do very quickly. But I would encourage you to think about what is the word for the year that you're going to be um, intentional about um, focusing on that word in everything you do, but setting the intention of what this year is going to be about for you. I think for many of us, as my dad used to say, if you uh, fail to plan, plan to fail. And I think it's about really setting up the intention and planning what this year overall looks like for you. So it's important that you think about your, your why and know your why as you're setting your intention why is it that you're doing this? Is it for other people? Is this really about legacy? Is it really about the relationships? But understanding your why. And then I want you to think about, as we talk about reflection, um, really understanding the power of critical reflection is so important. And quite often when we talk about critical reflection, we really are, you know, thinking about it academically. Um, and, and you see it where professors would talk about this in writing. But I think it's something that we should add to our arsenal for our lives. If you don't create the space to sit back and think about your day, you, you miss so many opportunities to create, you know, plans for improvement, to really analyze what's going on. And so critical Reflection is a reasoning process because it allows us to make meaning of our experiences. And if we don't sit back and take the time and create the space to that, for that, we continue to stay on this cycle of doing the same thing over and over again. It's kind of like the definition of insanity, where you're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And that's crazy. If we want 2021 to be different, we've got to do some things differently. And I think it starts with creating the space for ourselves, paying attention to how we are making meaning of our experiences every day, we make meaning of things, how you, know, you go outside and, and you see the world. 
are you looking at things negatively? Oh, the sky is dim and it's dark. Or are you seeing the possibilities and the positives of everything that, that you do, even when it is not the best situation? But we all have the power of how we choose to make meanings of our experiences. And so often you'll meet people who everything is so negative and you say good morning and they find a reason to complain and talk about what's so bad. But the reality is, is that based on how they make meaning, it really impacts their trajectory. So nothing is good. They look for the bad. And in doing that, they attract the negativity and the bad things into their world. It's not to say that you become delusional and you, you make up all these lies, but it is beginning to think about how you're framing things and how you're making meaning of those experiences that happen. And so there is this academic whose name is Sean, who talks a, a bit about reflection and why you use it. And there are three things that he says that I think are so powerful for us as tools as we think about the way that we use reflection in our lives. And so he talks about reflection on action. Basically, when something happens, we need to, you know, focus on those past experiences. Why did we respond the way that we do? Um, and it really is to think about once the event happens, it's to really take the time and to assess it, to review, to analyze that that situation. But he also talks about reflect in action. So as things are happening, it's taking the time to pause and pay attention to why that is, is happening or why it makes you feel the way that you do. I recently had a friend who sent me um, some information because I had told her oh, this situation bothers me. And she told me, you should pay attention to this ideal of shadow self. And I was thinking to myself, what the hell is shadow self? And once I looked it up initially, I was like, oh, you know, maybe she's trying to throw shade at something. And in all honesty, she was trying to help me and give me a clue that this situation was bothering me way more than it should. Long story short, the shadow self is really about the dark side of who we are and um, those things that bother us that probably shouldn't, but we have a response to them. And um, it's sitting back and paying attention to in that moment why it made you respond the way that it did. And I was frustrated with a friend because she's been going through the situation for years and she continues to talk about it. And I've been just saying, let it go, let it go. And I needed to sit back and understand why it was bothering me so much. And when I did that, when I reflected on it and paid attention to that shadow self, what I saw was she had the freedom to be able to talk about her experience and, and just go on and on. And I didn't feel like I could do that because for so much of my life, I had been taught to just suck things up just to, you know, deal with it. When things happen, you know, you deal with it and you keep moving and in my frustration with her, it was really about me because I saw how she was free and I really hadn't been in being able to express a lot of the frustrations that I had been through because of my inability to reflect when it was happening. So as I move forward in this new season, I am challenging myself and challenging you to really think about when things are occurring, instead of responding and just going, oh, why is this happening? What's going on? Is to step back, to pause, and to really think about what's occurring when you're going through those situations. So to reflect in action. And in doing that, it has helped me so much in moving forward. Because even now when things make me angry or I'm frustrated, Instead of responding with the emotion, it is to really sit back, pause, and be quiet, and to ask myself, not only why is this bothering me, but so what? And if I give an answer, I do another.